Hi guys, welcome back to Twisted Locker, your definitive horror podcast. Today we're going to be talking about some of the worst vampire movies ever made. What have you got for me, Jenks? All right, there's uh, plenty to choose from, believe it or not, but most of them are not worth mentioning. Uh, so first up, uh, it's Twilight 2, better known as New Moon. Now, some would argue that the first one should be on the list. <laughs> I don't hate the first one. It is what it is. I'm not the target audience. I'm not a 15-year-old girl. Uh, I I watched it. I didn't hate the first one, okay? Yes, you can make fun of it. Why are they going to school? <laughs> They're about a thousand years old. What's the point? I want you all to meet our new friend, Billy. I know. Why would you bother? But, um, but the second one is at uh, Trash, okay? And it's made by... A, by a director called uh, Chris Waits. And he directed About the Boy, which is absolutely amazing. Probably one of the best Hugh Grant films. Uh, even if you don't like Hugh Grant, that's worth watching. But I'm not saying it's all his fault. He's, he's sort of made a film based on a series of books. But whether the book is better or not, I ain't reading the fucking book. All right? I'm not doing that. I love this podcast, but there's limits to my fucking research. <laughs> you have failed me for the last time, Admiral. Um, but I, the story basically is, but there are any spoilers, um, she gets dumped by Edward right at the start. Edward is played by uh, Robert Patterson, who went on to be Batman. Um, and uh, Belle gets dumped by, by Robert Patterson. She plays Bella. Her name is um, uh, played by Kirsten, uh, Kristen Stewart. And the whole film is her wallowing in self-pity about being dumped. There's there's no action. She fixes up a bike to get through the depression. <laughs> she meets Jacob, played by um, uh, played by Taylor uh, Lautner. Um, and he's like the werewolf guy. That's a sort of love triangle thing. And... I can't really remember. I think he might help her fix the bike up. And it's like two hours of her fixing a bike up, being depressed. And then towards the end, spoiler alert, you got Michael Sheen comes into her as like the head vampire. And he's after mm. Edward for mm. coming back. To, I can't even remember. But Only it is shit. It's two hours of her being miserable and fixing up a motorbike. And you can see that the, the writer or the director, whatever you want to look at it, I just had this... Uh, one big story, and he's kind of chopping it up into parts, and this is just like, ugh, get through this to get to the next one for the finale, the final book or the final film. It is shit. And thank God Robert Patterson avoided any sort of cheesy uh, sort of uh, chick flicks after this. He carved his way all the way to the yeah. da- uh, to be Batman, and he deserved it. it uh, and he did paid his dues. Um, and, you know, he's a good actor. He's a cool actor, but this is shit. What do you think? You got two points to take away from that, Jenks, right? My first point, Twilight isn't even worth mentioning. I know we're talking about the worst vampire films, not the best. I did. But I wouldn't have even thought about Twilight. Second point, uh, Robert Patson's probably one of my favourite working actors right now. Um, he has just been so consistent since Twilight. Um, and probably my favourite Batman. Favourite Batman movie anyway. Um, my yeah. pick, my first pick, is going to be 1999's From Dust Still Dawn 2. Now, like you've said, Jenks, there's loads of worse films than this. It's not the worst film in the world. But I haven't seen every movie, so I'm going to go with the ones I have seen. And unfortunately, I have seen From Dust Still Dawn 2. It's directed by Scott Spiegel, very close friend of Sam Raimi. It's no surprise that Bruce Campbell makes an appearance in this movie. Uh, Scott Spiegel yeah. has, has worked with Sam Raimi since the start on basically all his films. Uh, basic, basic plot of the movie, you've got a group of thieves led by Robert Patrick. Uh, the titty twist is in it for about five minutes. That's about the only connection you'll get to the original um, from the Still Dawn, bar some relations and characters. Um the biggest problem with this movie, right, is it tried to be from Dust Till Dawn, but it doesn't have Quentin Tarantino writing the script and it doesn't have Robert Rodriguez directing it. Now, yeah. they're the only two people that made that film great. Without them two, it would have been just another vampire film. 
them two together for me are absolute dynamite and it shows in the first from Distal Dawn. Now, I got to say, the second one does keep that um, Robert Rodriguez feel of like Mexico, El Mariachi. Um, yeah. But like I said, it doesn't have that great script from Tarantino, the dialogue, everything. And it just feels like a straight to TV movie. Um, yeah. When I first discovered, right, that From Dustle Dawn had a sequel, I didn't know. I had this video on VHS when I was young. Internet wasn't about, so I couldn't, you know, Google and stuff. And yeah. I come across the second one in, in some shop and bought it. And, oh, my God, I was so disappointed. And when you can yeah. appreciate how bad a film is when you're young, you know it's a bad film. Um, <laughs> and I rewatched it again yeah. maybe a couple of years ago. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's one of the most yeah. poor attempts at a sequel ever. Um, I used to work in Blockbuster back in the day when that came out. Yeah. And it what you're right, it was straight to uh straight to DVD or video, I can't remember. I think they were still yeah. both at the time. And I remember renting it thinking, Oh, Bruce Campbell's in it. Well, that doesn't mean to say it's good if Bruce Campbell's in it. Yeah. You know, I love him. <laughs> of course. That's like, oh, it's it's not like uh hey, Danny Day Lewis is in it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. doesn't mean anything. But uh I watched it, it was shit. I didn't watch the Handman's Daughter, the the third yeah, one. Yeah. I think it's called. Third I think one. I'm guess. Yeah, they came out pretty much the same time. I'm guessing they were made sort of back the to same back. Year. Yeah, yeah, I think they were probably yeah, cheaply made. But uh, yeah, great choice. Uh, fucking shit. Yeah, dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> it right. is. It's bad. Okay, my last pick um, is the fucking like I said. There's loads of bad vampire films but the ones i like to put on lists or of any genre are the ones that bug me that could have been great uh and could have been a success and it is blade three better known as blade trinity what the fuck was this how can you go from blade arguably one of the best vampire films one of the coolest superhero films um and Blade 2, made by Guillermo yeah. del Toro, a master horror maker, makes a fucking awesome sequel, very underrated sequel. Could arguably be yeah. better than the first, but, uh, you know, the first has got a bit more charm. Uh, it was written by um, David Goya, and he uh, he wrote Batman, uh, The Dark Knight. Uh, I think he did Superman, maybe, or co-wrote it. Uh, he wrote the first two Blades, and he went on to direct Blade 3. Now, I've heard a lot of uh, rumours that there was a lot of problems behind the scenes with Blade Trinity. Um, I, pr- I think he didn't want to share the role because you had Ryan Reynolds in it and you had uh, Jessica Biel. Yeah. And the plot basically is of Blade 3, you've got... Um, I, when I say it, it sounds ridiculous. Dracula <laughs> comes back from the dead. Uh, played by uh, Dominic uh, Purcell. He's the guy from uh, Prison Break. And Dracula in this world is a, ca- is, has a, is a movie character. Uh, he is a fictional character, but he is real in this world. Comes back from the dead or back from s- a slumber, I can't remember. Uh, he's a fish out of water. He's, he's come to the new world. And he's the threat. And you're thinking, how come Dracula is less threatening than Deacon Frost? From the first one, you know, um, and you got yeah. <laughs> it's so laughable, right? You got Chris, Chris Christopherson played by uh, Whistler, great character, and the vampires frame Blade for a crime he didn't commit, get it on film, and the police now are after Blade, and Whistler uh, uh, goes like this: "Oh my God, now we're in the shit. The police are after us. We're fucked." I'm like. The police are always after him. He's like a vigilante. He's a fucking vampire. As if he gives a shit about a fucking cop. It's so crap. You got Triple H in it. Apparently it's his first ever film. Who the fuck knew? Once apart from The Rock and John Cena, once you got wrestlers in playing muscly vampires, like, what fucking steroids are vampires taking? What gym are they going to? They get they're strong. What kind of fucking weights are they doing? You know, it's like the silly yeah. thing of Superman when he's stacked. What gym is Superman going to to get that fucking jacked? <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> Vampires would not need to Can be jacked. It's so stupid. 
<laughs> tuna and uh, Nesquik <laughs> mixed Nesquik. together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and do you know what? David Goya, the, the writer, uh, wrote like some great stuff. He also wrote the awesome, if you haven't seen, you should, Dark City. Came out 97, 98. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you saw it. It's very good, very weird. Um, but yes, that's my pick. I hate it. The only good thing about Blade 3, Jessica Beale is fucking hot. Done. Good pick, Jenks. Cracking pick, actually. Uh, iconically known for the scene where uh, they CGI'd uh, Wesley Snipes' eyes open. <laughs> Oh, I heard about that. Yeah, there's a scene where he's like laying on a bed and his eyes were closed. I, I, there was something to do with he wouldn't open his eyes, so they just CGI eyes yes. over, over his eyelids. Yes, Ridiculous. and it, he was yeah, he was terrible problems behind the scenes apparently, and he was leaving posted yeah. notes uh, to give messages to the director. It was carnage. Yeah. Uh, what's your, okay? What's your last pick, then, pal? There we are. My last pick. I I don't I don't necessarily necessarily think this is a worse film than from Dust Till Dawn Two, but I'm gonna go with 2012's Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Now, it is what it says on the tin, and how much more can you expect from a movie called Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter? Now, the reason I've included this is because it should have been more fun. Like, I like novelty movies. I'm not a snob. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to watch a film where Abe Lincoln is, is a vampire hunter. But it's just not fun at all and it takes itself way too seriously. So the basis yeah. of the plot is, the, the title, you've got Abraham Lincoln hunting vampires. And it's just a ridiculous movie. And I was and I enjoyed Zombievers. So let's just put that in perspective. Oh, Zombie. Oh, Zom Zombievers, right? <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed yeah, Zombievers. So I'm not a snob, right? Yeah, but no, yeah. I watched this when it came out, and I jumped on it. I didn't go to cinema or anything, but when I was able to watch it, I jumped on it because I like a fun movie, and it's just lifeless and boring. I didn't enjoy it one bit. Um, it belongs to that same category of novelty movies like Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. It's like mix and yeah. match and genres and stuff. Um, yeah. I'm waiting for the sequel, Richard Richard Nixon fucking wolf groomer. Do you know what I mean? It's it's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> And what I remember most about this film as well, right, is do you know when you get those really big blockbusters that come out and then you get all the, all the rip-offs? I remember yeah. going into Asda or something. And they had Abraham Lincoln, Zombie Hunter. <laughs> there's no cure, there's no hope. <laughs> I was like, no, why are you sake. ripping off a crap film? Yeah. Do, do you why know, you like, when they, film, like, when they try to marry two, like, genre, very different genres, like you said, with Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Like, yeah, yeah. I know we're going off a little bit, but my wife loves Pride and Prejudice. I fucking hate it. I love zombies. She hates zombies. So none of us were satisfied. It was a, it ruined a zombie film and it ruined a Pride yeah. and Prejudice film. Same with what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, I don't know, thinking like, let's get Barbie for men. Like, let's bring in, let's make the sequel called Ken. No one's going to like that. It It's yeah. just excluding two uh, different people. But uh, yeah, good pick. Uh, I haven't seen that film. Uh, I'm definitely probably not going to watch it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it Not came out over team. 10 years ago now, so uh, you've, you've missed your chance, to be fair. I missed it. I'm gutted. gutted. You're not exactly going to chuck it on now, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> there we are then, guys. That wraps it up for today. Just remember, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys.